Mets lose five to two to the Chicago Cubs. And overall, with this one, obviously I'm not happy that they lost. You're in a pennant race. You really need to start scraping up the wins, especially looking over and seeing San Francisco right now is up one to nothing. Obviously, that could change it. One to nothing. Plenty of baseball left. But you need to scrape these wins. And it's unfortunate that they lost this one. But at the end of the day, this is one where I'm actually not mad really with the loss in some regards look obviously again you want them to win and there are so many things that just went wrong for the Mets in this one and if I'm telling you that you shouldn't be that mad at this loss then you probably shouldn't be mad at all because I you guys know how hard I am on this team but at the end of the day I'm not too mad because they put together good at bats they just couldn't get the timely hit Chris Bassett, he was all over the place, couldn't execute pitches properly. He was just all over the map when it came to his pitches and trying to execute them. So there's just things that didn't go right. That, that's pretty much it for this one. I thought they played some solid baseball, though, overall. I thought that they just need a couple other things to go their way. But we'll talk about it. Before we do, be sure to leave a like on the video if you do enjoy. Subscribe if you guys are new, especially if you're Met fans. Turn on your notifications, too, so you know when I upload next. But... It started in the first inning, too. You get the bases loaded, one out, and you have Mark Canna just taking a absolute golden opportunity of a pitch right there. He just took one right down the middle of the plate for whatever reason. Lindor got that single, and then you had walk from McNeil and Vogie. But Canna, I don't know what he was doing, but he took that pitch all the way for some reason, and it was right in his wheelhouse. You got to crush that thing. Second inning, Bassett lets a home run up to Ortega. His slider was not great tonight, which we'll get into that. And that was just the start of what became a theme with his slider being absolutely abysmal tonight. Allowed that home run. Mets don't do anything offensively in the second or third minus a Lindor walk. But in the third inning... He also lets up another home run, walks Alfonso Rias, and then Zach McKin uh, McKinstry ends up hitting a home run, and that one was off of the sinker, which made it a 3 to nothing game. So, yeah, again, Bassett just not executing pitches, leaving them in the wrong location, and he paid for it. He paid for it. He didn't have a good outing, and the fourth inning, it, it was strange to see. He walks Ian Happ, allows an RBI single to Ortega, and... Hangs a curveball to him. Then allows Rias to get a or Rivas to get a single, make it five to nothing. And Tommy Hunter's all of a sudden in the game, and it's the fourth inning. And I, I think it's weird that the fans were booing Bassett. Like, listen, he didn't have a great outing. It's the Chicago Cubs. I get all that. But he's been great for us all year to the point where I, I think it's unfair to be booing him now. I think sitting there silently would have been the way to do it, but um, that's at least my thoughts on that. But overall, yeah, it sucks. He's out of the game and things just didn't go past its way. He wasn't executing his pitches. I've said it like 50 times now in this video, but just missing locations, missing locations and not having, not having it. Simple as that. And that's what I don't want to say lost in this game because again, they didn't get the timely hit. They didn't get the timely hit. Fourth inning, you have a chance to spark a big rally. Canna with a single, Escobar with a single. Naquin strikes out, which, oh boy. Uh, and then Jason McCann gets an RBI single, makes it 5-1. You have a chance to blow the doors open on this one, but then Nimmo strikes out. And fast forward a bit to the sixth inning, you have Escobar who gets that triple with two outs, and you're thinking maybe a two-out rally we're going to get going here, but no, Naquin strikes out. And... The bullpen actually held down pretty well. You have Trevor May coming back from the IL. And he looked good in his inning of work there, picking up two strikeouts. And it sucks for Trevor May because you're talking about a guy who was injured most of the year. And then he, of course, has a positive test when he comes right back and he starts to actually turn things around. It's been a rough year for Trevor May and you got to feel for him. You got to feel for him. Michael Givens, though, comes in, gets three strikeouts. Beautiful work there. Mets offense doesn't really get much going there. Later on, eighth inning. Uh, things got a bit shaky. You have Givens allow back-to-back -back singles, and then he gets a strike him out, throw him out, double play with Framil Reyes there. So 
That kind of bailed you out of the inning a bit. Might have made things worse if you didn't. Ian Happ then intentionally walked into Patrick Wisdom, ends up striking out. You go to the eighth, and this is what pains me because you thought you had a rally here. Alonzo with a single, Bogey then with a walk, and then you have, well, Jeb McNeil had a single. I forgot to mention that. Jeb McNeil led things off with a single, and bases loaded. You had Michael Givens' pitch run, which was weird and confused everyone, but I understand the logic. You wanted to save your best pinch runner for later on in the game when there is that opportunity to actually have him make a big impact, whether it's to win the game or tie the game later on. But yeah, that's what ended up happening. It's not like it made a difference, but just talking about the circumstances. And then you didn't want to waste a second player on your bench there because if you ended up just pitch running Terrence Gore and then you end up pitch hitting with someone else later. It just would have been a mess. You would have been wasting more guys. So I understand the logic there. And it eliminates the DH, which was weird. And it was weird to see Givens on the base paths. But Canada then strikes out. Another brutal strikeout. Just, he couldn't pick up on that last pitch slider. That's what was really bad. He couldn't pick up on that. And Escobar then flies out. And Darren Ruff comes in the pitch hit. And you knew it was over. He lines out. And the Mets lose this one. So yeah, Darren Ruff. He should be playing. It's simple as that. I would have rather Mark Viento there. I know he went 0-4 in his MLB debut, but Darren Ruff cannot be playing. He can't. He can't. Bass hit three and two-thirds of an inning of work, allowed five hits, five earned runs, two walks, got two strikeouts. Not a great day at the office at all for Bass hit. We're seeing him usually be the innings eater here, and he certainly did not eat many innings here today, and it's just unfortunate. Just unfortunate, and it's not like if he had a great start, it would have made the difference. They couldn't get the timely hit. They couldn't score another run. It is what it is. Tommy Hunter, he did good in an inning and a third of work, picking up for Bassett, getting a strikeout, and overall just having a clean day. Trevor May, really great outing for him, and it's nice to see him do well when he's coming back for the first time in a while. It's not easy to do, and he picks up a pair of strikeouts, so... Very happy with what I saw from Trevor May. Could be huge going forward if he gets going there. Give it to two innings of five strikeouts. Got into a bit of trouble. Out two hits in that, that eighth inning. But you take what you got from Michael Givens. You take what you got. And he had a pretty solid outing. A lot of walk. But again, five strikeouts. I mean, that's not something to sleep on there. And then I think that was an intentional walk, too. So not even really a walk towards him. And then Joel, he gets two strikeouts in an inning of work. The pitcher was not the problem today, outside of Bassett, of course. But it really wasn't necessarily even that big of a problem still because, again, the lineup just couldn't get the timely hit. Brandon Nimmo with an inexcusable 0-4 on the day. He went 0-5, struck out twice. Terrible day at the office for Brandon Nimmo. Uh, yeah, he... You can't be hitting lead, uh, in the leadoff spot if you're going to be like that i'll just say that but lindor two for four struck out once got a walk and got an rbi got that home run late in the game which i forgot to mention that he got that home run in the ninth which i guess but yeah lindor uh not a bad day though for him he did pretty solid jeff mcneil going one for four on the day with a walk pretty solid day for jeff mcneil not gonna complain pete one for four pretty decent day there vogey going 0 for 2, got two walks though, so not mad, not too mad about Bogey's performance, but again, no timely hits, and this is where we get to Mark Canna, who had the opportunity a couple times to get a timely hit, and he couldn't come through, he got one hit on the day, couldn't get the timely one, so struck out twice in big spots, quite frankly, too, it's just inexcusable, and yeah, some of those pitches that he struck out on, just inexcusable, inexcusable, Eduardo Escobar going two for four on the day. Pretty solid day for Escobar. He has himself a nice little streak going on, a hit streak, knocking on wood. I shouldn't have said it, but uh, I'm just saying what's true. He is on one, and he's been tearing the cover off the baseball lately. He's been looking great. Got that average up to 240. Get the OPS up in the 724. I shouldn't say in the range. That is his OPS, but very, uh, very nice production from Escobar. Naquin 0 for 3, struck out three times. And this is the problem with Tyler Naquin. He either looks completely lost and he needs a map up there, or he'll look like Barry Bonds. You're not getting anything in between with Tyler Naquin, and he was awful today at the plate. We'll leave it at that. Darren Ruff, I don't want to see him play anymore. 
that simple. Jays McCann with a hit and an RBI. Happy what I saw from McCann actually getting a timely hit there. So I will take that. Mets overall with eight hits on the day. I'm not too mad about this loss. Like I said, Giants up now two to nothing in the top of the third. So got to hope they could grab a win there to keep the one and a half lead safe. And then tomorrow you got DeGrom on the mound. You're hoping that you're going to win and score runs for him. Remains to be seen. But overall, I'm not too mad about this loss, actually. I, but it, it could have been worse. I, I'm not going to lose sleep over this one. It's just they couldn't get the timely hit. It's simple as that. And even if Bassett pitched better, it wouldn't have mattered. But yeah, let me know what you guys thought about this game in the comments. Actually, I'd love to hear from you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this. Keeping it short today. Not really a lot to unpack with this one. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, leave a like. Subscribe if you guys are new, especially for Met fans. Turn on your notifications too so you know when I upload next. And I will see you in the next one. Let's go Mets.